We're going to talk more about that now with our chief foreign editor, Rob Parsons, who joins me on the set. Rob, this vote is set to be held on Saturday. Will it happen? And crucially, will it pass? Uh, well, the Ukrainians are describing themselves as cautiously optimistic. And I, and I suppose, you know, comp in comparison with the situation just a few weeks ago, they've got some grounds for it. What, what essentially is happening is that uh, the House of Representatives, uh, led by Speaker Mike Johnson, have taken the bill that was passed through the Senate over two months ago now, a $95 billion bill, huge. Uh, 60 billion of that was for Ukraine, the rest for I Israel, Taiwan, uh, and various other things as well. Uh, but instead of putting it through as one bill, he's decided it will be split up into four component parts and will be voted on separately. Um, and then if it passes, it will be bundled back together again and sent as one bill back to the Senate, which will then vote on it. And then if it passes through the Senate, it will be signed by the president uh, into law. Uh, we're not there yet, though, but uh, there, there, does, there do seem to be some grounds for optimism, not least that there is solid support for it from the Democrats inside the, the House of Representatives, uh, and at least some support for it from Republicans as well. Uh, Republicans themselves have only a two-seat majority in the, in the House of Representatives, so they absolutely need Democratic support on this. But to all intents and purposes, it seems to be there. Mike Johnson himself... Uh, conversion is probably putting too strong a, a play on it, but he certainly seems to have shifted his position uh, since, since he first became Speaker six months ago. Much more supportive now, much more recognizant of the need to support uh, Ukraine. But you're absolutely right. You, meant, you mentioned the hardliners in the party who were opposed to this. Uh, one of them, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, has all, all, already submitted a motion to have him removed from office. Uh, that's not likely to happen, however, before the vote. Rob, of course, all of this comes as the war is dragging on in Ukraine. How desperate are the Ukrainians at this point? How much do they need this aid? Well, I, th I think, you know, it's almost impossible to, to uh, overstate just how desperate they are. It was ju just a week ago, to give you an idea of just the, the sort of situation, the decisions they ha have to make. There was a massive Russian attack on the a nuclear on the uh, uh, thermal power plant, Tripilia, to the southeast of Kiev. It supplies vital supplier of the energy to the Kiev region, Cherkasy region, and Jutomir regions. Uh, take it away, uh, and Kiev, uh, Ukraine has enormous problems. Russia fired 11 missiles. Uh, the Ukrainians were able to shoot down seven but they simply ran out of missiles after that themselves to shoot them down. They have to make decisions, in other words, about where to deploy their missiles. They can't have them everywhere because they're now short because the West uh, has not been supplying them in sufficient numbers. That's the sort of dilemma that they're facing at the moment. That's why they're saying it's absolutely critical. And Alexander Sirsky, the commander in chief, saying, not only the missiles that are hitting our infrastructure, it's the Russian army on the Eastern Front now is has enormous preponderance of force, 10 to 1 advantage in artillery. So we absolutely need uh, that, 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 that backing from the United States. Uh, as Denis Shmihal, the Prime Minister, put it, we are cautiously optimistic about it, but we need this money yesterday, uh, not tomorrow, not today. All right, Rob, thanks for that. That's our Chief Foreign Editor, Rob Parsons.